This is a new Citroën C5 with an X at the end. I think it should be called the C5X. Warum? Keep on watching to find out. This episode is brought to you by Carvago. Don't be daft. Sit at home where it doesn't rain. Sit at the computer. Be smart. Choose your car online with Carvago. I am, of course, referring to the second-generation Citroën C5 commercial from 2008, in which the car is depicted in a typically German setting to Wagner's music, and the slogan is unmistakable, unmistakably German, made in France. The new Citroën C5X is, in my opinion, another such vehicle. After all, how else to describe a car that combines coupe body style with estate boot with raised SUV-like stance? Sounds familiar? That was the brief for BMW 5 Series GT, the best and the most underrated car in the brand's history, I think. And what's it going to be like for Citroën? On the outside, the C5X is smaller than it looks. Its dimensions are closer to the BMW 3 Series GT, from which it is still smaller. It is also smaller than the Opel Insignia Sports Tourer or the Volkswagen Arteon Shooting Brake. It also has a smaller boot than the Opel and the Volkswagen. But the design of the C5X makes the car look much larger, like an SUV. The wide front and rear are tall, almost vertical. The headlights and the daytime running lights at the front take up a large area. The D-pillar is hidden behind a long piece of glass stretching all the way to the boot. The spoiler and the wings seem to be quite high and huge lamps overlapping the side of the car and then there's the nearly 280 centimeter wheelbase and 19-inch rims with low-profile tires. I don't mean to say that the Citroën C5X is a small car. After all, it's more than 480 centimeters long and more than 181 centimeters wide. It simply looks much larger than it is compared to other station wagons on the market. Which is not to say that it is small inside. The boot capacity may only be 545 liters, only because the competition has more, but it's one of the few cars where my suitcase fits standing on its long side under the cargo cover and I can still easily shut the tailgate. And yes, I have to do it manually because electric tailgate is only on the highest trim level. Looking for a car for family, fun or work? Carvago.com is the place for you. Carvago is a modern platform with vetted cars from all over Europe. You can buy a car from the comfort of your home and Carvago will deliver it to your doorstep. Carvago.com features more than 700,000 cars from vetted dealers across Europe. You select a car on Carvago. Carvago sends out its experts and presents you with Car Audit, a full report on the actual condition of the car. Car Audit keeps track of 270 technical points, includes photos as well as final evaluation by a Carvago certified technician. Next, you simply select financing and delivery options, you sign a deal with Carvago, and Carvago buys the vetted car for you. You have 14 days after delivery to test drive and return the car without giving a reason. The price also includes up to 12 months warranty depending on the region. So, what's your car from Carvago going to be like? The plug-in hybrid has a smaller boot, but for the conventionally powered version, you can order a spare wheel mounting kit should you want to add a spare wheel yourself later on. Here under the floor, there is a styrofoam insert with compartments. The cargo cover fits here as well. No shopping bag hooks though. But there are levers for folding second row backrests and the backrests are spring loaded so you don't have to push them. When the second row backrests are folded, the boot capacity increases to 1640 liters. There is plenty of legroom and headroom in the rear, but it's dark and the panoramic roof, only over the heads of the driver and the front passenger by the way, is an option and only on the highest trim level. Lighter color upholstery is also optional. There are large door pockets, an armrest with cup holders, 
a ski hutch, air vents, and USB ports. So first, getting in, and again, the same problem off. I complained about in the Mokka, among others, the sills are too high. I already want to shut the door because my foot should be in the car. And no, it's still in the door, literally, not figuratively. Uh, I'm afraid it may be difficult for older people to get in and out. The cockpit is elegant and spacious. The graphics on the display in front of the driver and on the center display are simple, bordering on unsophisticated, but at least everything works instantly. <coughs> oh, <second. clears throat> there are buttons on the steering wheel and a button for the steering wheel heating above the left knee. There are also buttons and dials for climate control. There are USB ports, a wireless charger, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Note the cubby next to the charger. When my phone fell flat into it, I had to use a tool to get it out. The cup holders are generous. Storage compartment under the armrest is large. The glove box is average size. The door pockets are large and the seats are very comfortable. Seat massage function is bundled with leather upholstery, but at least there is memory settings for electrically adjustable seats. The driving position is comfortable, not just for me, I'm 175 centimeters tall, but also for Anna, who's 160 centimeters tall. We both have good visibility. The steering wheel doesn't obstruct Anna's view of the instrument cluster. Everything is within reach. The first thing that caught my attention in the C5X was how quiet it is. This car is pretty well soundproof, not like the best out there, but good enough to get my attention. Especially since at the same time I'm testing the Cupra Born, which has very poor soundproofing, which is compounded by the lack of an internal combustion engine to drown out some of the outside noise. In the Citroen C5X, it's very decent. Sure, probably thicker windows or active noise cancellation would further improve acoustic comfort, but then the price would be harder to swallow. So we have comfortable seats, acoustic comfort, but what about the suspension? This car has shock absorbers with progressive hydraulic cushions. Citroen launched this in the C5 Aircross and it also used it on the C4 Cactus. Located on both sides of the shock absorber, during significant compression, the hydraulic stops absorb energy, so there is no rebound. Under normal road conditions, they give more suspension trouble, thus making the ride very comfortable. In the plug-in hybrid version, the progressive hydraulic cushions are combined with an adaptive suspension that adapts to the road ahead thanks to a camera, but this version I have not driven. As for the standard suspension with progressive hydraulic cushions, uh, they do indeed level out small imperfections, oh shut up, <laughs> in the road, uh, but on more complicated bumps, uh, the car just jumps all over the place. However, on most roads I've driven, the comfort is above average. The engine range, well, the choice is modest. A 1.2 liter PureTech with 130 horsepower, a 1.6 PureTech with 180 horsepower, or a plug-in hybrid, 225 horsepower, and this car could use a diesel, but it's not available. And if you're in a market like Germany, you don't even get the 1.6 petrol, which is non-hybrid. So it's 1.2 or the plug-in hybrid. This test example is the 180 horsepower petrol 1.6. The manufacturer promises 0 to 100 km per hour time of 8.1 seconds. My best result was half a second slower, both in comfort and sport modes. For what it's worth, fuel consumption of 6.5 liters per 100 km combined is achievable as long as you go easy on the throttle. And that's even in a situation when the stop and start system shuts down at temperatures near freezing. I experienced something similar a few years ago in a Mazda CX-30. 
in a normal mode, the gearbox is somewhat jerky when accelerating. The C5X drives smooth in sport mode, while I'd reserve the eco mode for standstill traffic only. But the steering is, at least on initial turning, very direct. You get the impression that with small corrections, you can turn around on a dime. Of course, this is not the case. Those small, quick movements are good for avoiding potholes or changing lanes quickly. And you do have to turn the steering wheel quite a bit to maneuver in a parking lot. But the first impression is, again, reminiscent of a BMW. Now, speaking of parking maneuvers, the 360 camera is, again, only on the top trim version and uh, this car has that kind of stitched image we've seen in PSA cars for years. For what it's worth, the adaptive cruise control is standard from the basic trim upwards and in the two top versions the lane keeping assist is added and it works well enough. My only problem is with the data presentation on the head-up display. I want to say I appreciate the large head-up display, especially one that seems legible. You can even display directions from Android Auto on it, although it's not as impressive as directions from the OEM satnav. It seems that when the head-up display was designed, nobody planned that someone would actually simultaneously display data from the adaptive cruise control and Android Auto navigation. As a result, part of the speed reading is partially under the oversized Android Auto navigation icon and changing the distance setting for the adaptive cruise control makes the adaptive cruise control icon disappear from the display for a while. This in turn I remember from the Opel Astra. So we will continue to see things like this in the Stellantis Group cars for years to come. Prices for the Citroen C5X started €36,850 for the field pack with a 1.2-litre engine. A PHEV starts at €45,000. This is a Shine 1.6, which is unavailable in Germany, where I take my prices from, but if it were available, it would probably cost around €45,000. Not an exorbitant price for a station wagon or an SUV of this size. I like the Citroen C5X and I like it despite it trying to cut my leg open, despite lack of space on the head-up display. You can call it an estate, a berlin, a shooting break, and I will call it C5X. And how do you like the Citroen C5X? And what do you think about a coupe estate SUV? Let me know in a comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, Join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.